right on the site. And so this can happen right in the middle of your cities, right in the middle of your communities. But there is a lot of data out there. And so I happen to be in Arkansas when a lot of these earthquakes were going on. I was there with Josh and we were doing a talk and a lot of these people showed up and had a lot of these kind of questions. And at that time it was pretty clear that these injection wells had something to do with it. And it was in the area of these injection wells where they were having these earthquakes. And so Josh stood up and he said, I'm going to get a bus. We're going to have two buses out here tomorrow morning. We're going to go out and we're going to blockade the injection well. The industry shut it down before he got a chance to do that. They came out and they announced, we will shut this well down. We will no longer be using this well. That sort of stuff makes a difference. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering if there's any direct action plan currently, right now, that people are going to do. There's a, there's a lot of talk about that. I'm talking about organized, ready yes. to go. Yes, like there's a, a lot of discussion around the United States about that. Um, like I said, we all need to get together. I think that uh, everybody can help everybody else. Yeah. So, Ellis had a question. You guys well, must know something. Uh, just a comment. I, I think one way to do that would be an occupation of a, uh, of a well site. Uh, I made some efforts about a year ago to try, try to organize an occupation of uh, the wells in uh, uh, Excelsior Township in Calcasca County. Couldn't make it happen. Not enough. But uh, there may be uh, some new uh, application, some new well that's starting to be drilled or starting to be fracked. And maybe if we could all be listening to each other and if there's a call for an occupation in the middle of the, of the uh, Mackinac Forest on a particular day, a particular time, uh, we could all converge. Uh, so that's just an idea to think about for the future. Who would be willing to do that? Who in this room would be willing to do that? I just wanted to say Food and Water Watch is uh, part of a global crackdown that's going to take place on uh, September 22nd. Uh, they're planning actions all over the globe in, in relation to get you know, for a ban on fracking. So we are encouraged at our local level to come up with some actions and some things that we can plug into that event. Uh, that might be a good one. Right. What's the date again? Uh, September 22nd. And if you go on uh, Food and Water Watch's website, you can find out what's already scheduled. And we are having an activity in Petoskey. Chris Grobel will be speaking at the Carnegie Library at 3 o'clock on September 22nd in um, about local Michigan fracking. You had a question, ma'am? Yeah, something just occurred to me. Industry is when I'm getting a new gastro Monday, <laughs> and the industry is going to say okay, but we need more and more gas power. So, what is your counter argument to providing this increased need for gas? Well, you know when I when I moved from Dish, I actually went went through that, and I realized that I had always been getting energy on the back of somebody else. I had, I had realized that, and after going through what we went through in DISH, I made myself a decision that I was not going to do that anymore. And so, in Texas, we have wind energy, so we have an alternative. And so I'm on a 100% wind energy plan. Most of your utilities have some sort of uh, alternative energy plan that will help promote that. If you keep calling your energy company and asking them those questions, if they don't have one, they will probably get one. Because it is a little difficult to say, we need to ban, we need to stop this, and then go home and cook dinner on your gas stove. 
and that's been some disappointing things is that people who I've dealt with have moved out of the drilling area but didn't change that portion of their lifestyle. So every energy that you use, whether it's going out and getting in your car and driving, that energy is taken on the back of somebody. Um, okay. Cal, can I interrupt? Uh, sorry, uh, you asked previously, is there anyone here from the industry? And no one raised their hand, but I believe there is someone here from the industry. And I would ask uh, Eric to identify himself. My name is Eric Baus. I work with Energy In Depth. Uh, you can see energyindepth.org online, and uh, we're a fact check organization. We're ch working with industry and citizenry to reach out and get the story straight. Thank you. <coughs> He's been to all my presentations. Actually, yeah. it, it, there's usually somebody from Energy In Depth in my presentations. So that's okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I did sell my house to Absolutely, that can be a problem. So, you can't adequately disclose what you went through in just a block this big. So I actually made them watch Gasland prior to me selling my house to them. They bought it anyway. Yes, sir. Uh, I think groundwater contamination is something that we all can understand, but it appears to be a weakness, though, of confirmed <coughs> occurrence of fracking uh, creating a problem for groundwater for human consumption. So I think this should something, because we all drink water, our animals and everything around here, our trees drink water. But where are there confirmed cases of where fracking has created groundwater contamination that we all can uh, reference? I want everybody to go home after this and Google the sky is pink. It is a 20 minute or so video by Josh Fox and it uses the industry's own documentation to talk about casing failures, etc. So go home and Google the sky is pink. Take a look at that. I think that'll answer your, a lot of your questions because that's their own information. And um, do you want to talk about 10K a little bit? No? Okay, well. Every time they do a frack bait, Poisons five million gallons of water. It's part of the frack process. Well, there's your water contamination right there. And that's on the DEQ website. It says the, an average. It's on the DEQ website that they use approximately five million gallons of water for a frack job, and that's mixed with chemicals. So they're taking that. That's fresh water. So that they're taking that out of our groundwater, our streams, our rivers, our lakes. So that's every single time the well is frack. And according to Chris Grubel, they add between 80 and 130 tons of chemicals, 40% of which come up and are disposed of as frac waste in relatively shallow deep injection wells. And it is disposed of as it doesn't have to follow hazardous waste criteria because of the exemptions. Great. Yes, sir. You mentioned that... And so I want to thank you all for having me.